Hi, this is Manos Brilakis and Peter Taiti from the Minneapolis Heart Institute presenting case 2 for the manual of non-CTO coronary interventions. This is a case that highlights different, different treatment options when the target vessel of PCI cannot be engaged. The patient had a previous coronary bypass graft surgery. He did have a patent lima graft to the LAD that was excellent. And he also had another patent graft to the obtuse marginal branch. However, he did have significant left main stenosis and proximal circumflex stenosis. And uh, that was the presumed culprit lesion for the patient's symptoms. Therefore, the plan was to perform PCI in the native left main as well as the circumflex branch. However, what was extremely challenging was engaging the vessel. Although we were in the femoral axis, we tried to engage using several guide catheters, such as an EBU-375, an EBU-35, and ICARI left 3.5, but we were unable to engage the vessel and advance a guide wire. We then took a polymer jacketed Fielder FC guide wire and knuckled it into the occluded LAD, and then used that as an anchor, trying to advance another wire into the proximal circumflex, and we even used the dual lumen twin pass torque microcatheter over that initial wire that was into the LAD to attempt to wire into the circumflex through the second over the wire lumen of the twin pass catheter. That, however, was also unsuccessful. After several attempts, we changed the guide catheter for an Amblat 0.75, which still did not provide excellent support. However, we were able to advance the field FC wire barely into the left main. And then we were able to advance very slowly a fine crossed microcatheter that did not prolapse into the LAD, but instead tracked into the circumflex branch. After doing that, then we were able to advance the field FC through the fine cross all the way to the distal circumflex. And then we advanced the fine cross all the way down the vessel. The wire was changed for the workhorse guide wire. The left main and the proximal circumflex were predilated. And then we attempted to deliver stance because of poor guide catheter support. We used a guide liner guide catheter extension which is seen here into the left main. And doing that, we were able to deliver a first stand. However, the stand did not cover entirely into the left main. And then it was followed by a second stand all the way to the ostium of the left main that was deployed with a nice final result and TM3 flow into this distal circumflex. The case was fairly long, taking almost three hours, most of which was spent trying to engage an advance of wire through the left main and the circumflex. A total of 275 ml of contrast were used. This case provides several lessons. The first is that a good kite catheter support is critical for the success of any PCI, and therefore it is worthwhile to take the time and try various guide catheters that can provide good engagement and good kite support. The second is that anchor wires can be useful in providing support for when the guide catheter cannot give good support. The best, of course, way is to have an anchor wire and an anchor balloon in a side branch. However, in our case, that was not feasible because the LAD was a CTO. And finally, the use of a micro catheter can be very, very useful for wiring through challenging lesions, whether they are CTOs or not because it provides excellent support for the guide wire and allows guide wire exchanges once the lesion is partially crossed. Thank you.